Life by Divine with Sue DeMay fosters deep healing and profound awakenings as she guides you to hear, answer, and trust the highest calling of your heart. Your host and sacred guide is global impact visionary leader Sue DeMay, a best-selling author, international speaker, and gifted intuitive healer who challenges all of us to shift from life by default or even life by design to truly living life by divine. And now, here is Sue DeMay. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here and tuning in each week. And uh, today, I'm, I'm excited to talk about happiness. And I know a lot of people spend a lifetime chasing happiness. So today, I'm going to talk about how to stop chasing happiness and how to align with authentic joy. Now, with joy, joy and happiness kind of go together. But I'm going to just take the word joy and happiness and use them a little bit differently so that you understand the chase and you can understand the pursuit. You can understand how happiness is often hijacked by the ego. As I share today, my invitation for you is just to be wide open to anything, remain really curious in the mind so that you don't have the filter of judgment in your mind and just try on everything and take what resonates. So be open to try on everything as a possibility for you and then take what resonates. Because the thing with all of these articles or all of these these episodes and anything I do and put out into the world, there's gonna be times where something really resonates deeply with you. There's gonna be times where only pieces resonate deeply with you. And then there's other times where you've kind of got that full circle healing or you got that lesson and it's just a reminder. Yeah, got that. It's, so it's confirming. So there's an invitation at any time to just be wide open. The other piece to consider is the ego is really clever. I've talked about the ego a lot ever since my, the launch of my book, The Evolution of the Ego. The ego is a shift changer. It is a clever disguised personality driven entity of itself and it, and it and it basically can can take on any and all roles it needs to in order to keep you buying into fear in order to keep you playing small in order to keep you from taking risks in order to keep you safe from from love or whatever it else whatever else it's convinced you that's going to hurt you Happiness is one of those things that the ego loves to hijack and use as like a big shiny carrot hung just a couple feet in front of you. As you take a step forward, that carrot moves a step forward. As you take two steps forward, that carrot moves two steps forward. So it's always within your vision. You can see it. You can almost taste it. You can almost reach it, but it's always just outside of your reach. So you never actually really truly catch it. And when we do have the illusion of catching it, we seem to have got it. We're okay. We're feeling happiness. It is often fleeting for most people. It's, it's one of those human emotions that is fleeting. It can come and go and it can rise and fall. And it's not sustainable for most people. It's not a sustainable emotion. Now joy is a little different. So I'm talking about happiness here. So think about happiness as on the emotional scales, one of the emotions that as humans we experience. And when we allow happiness to rise naturally and we experience happy moments, we, we can feel joy. We can feel the happiness inside of us rise up and expand. The challenge is that we're taught, we're programmed to chase happiness. We're programmed to always reach for it or want it and and think that well when i'm happy then then my life will be complete and or there's conditions to be happy so when i make more money then i'll be happy when i'm doing the work i want to do then i'll be happy when i have my family then i'll be happy when i find the love of my life then i'll be happy so it's we suffer from this when then syndrome and life is conditional based on what we have or don't have or what is happening or not happening in our lives so happiness becomes conditional. A lot of times people, you know, and we always hear this, the saying happiness doesn't buy or money doesn't buy happiness. And a lot of people often add, but it sure makes life easier. So 
happiness is one of those things that's tied to so many different conditions. Abundance being one of them, money being one of them, relationships, love relationships, intimacy. There's so much tied to happiness. And the ego loves that. It thrives in that because anything we connect or attach to, it, it creates attachment and the ego loves it. When we look at happiness on its own as a human emotion, there's times where we'll feel happy and then there's times where we'll feel sad. In a time where we're feeling sad or we're grieving, say we just lost something or someone, it's, it's not reasonable to feel happy about that. Now, there are certain people that can celebrate in, in, at a funeral and celebrate the person's life, but there's still an element of sadness and grief. So we're allowing all of the emotions to rise up and be expressed and be honored. We, we do our best not to get stuck or camp out in them. But when it comes to happiness, a lot of times it can actually rise up naturally and then it'll just kind of pitter away sometimes and or sometimes it's not present. The challenge is when we're chasing happiness, if it's not present, we judge it like there's something wrong. There's something wrong with us. There's something wrong with, with our mind. We're not appreciating life. We should be more grateful for what we have. We should be happy. There's so much that gets tied up into that, into the mind. My invitation for you today is to listen with a wide open mind, as I said earlier, curious mind, so that we can start to unwind any attachments, any of the unhealthy programming that are, that's going on, and then also any, any preconditioned kind of chasing activity that you got going on for happiness or for anything for that matter, for chasing anything was always going to feel like it's out of our reach. And usually that pursuit or that chase is from the ego, from the ego's place. And as you start to let go and start to create awareness around that, we can start to heal those pieces. We can start to change that programming. And then we can start to align with more authentic joy, which is where it just naturally rises up within us. And we feel happy when we're in that state. The one human emotion that I have in my experience have, have noticed that anybody's capable of maintaining or sustaining is peace. We can be in grief and have a foundation of peace within us. We can be happy and be at peace. We can be sad and be at peace. We can be angry and still have a foundation of peace. So what I found is that if we, if we can go for a sense of peace, then we can allow those other emotions to be there and we won't have the judgment and we won't have the expectation that they should or shouldn't be there. And we can really just honor our experience as human beings. So that's about em em embracing our humanness, allowing our humanness to be there. And the more we allow the divinity, the divine or spirit to animate our personalities instead of the ego animating our personalities. I've talked about this in previous episodes. I've also shared this in my book, The Evolution of the Ego. When we can allow the divine spirit within each of us to animate our personalities, we can actually sustain a real deep level of peace. And we can witness the human emotions rise and fall and come and go without judgment, without expectation, without opinion, without stories, and allow ourselves to have this beautiful human experience. And at the same time, embody our divinity. When we look at happiness, the other piece we need to look at, and I've been talking about the ego game of opposites a lot lately. I have a free masterclass and healing workshop coming up at the beginning of the month. So if you want to have the, the hearts up and, and the kind of get the notice ahead of time, what the date is and how to sign up, then sign up for my newsletter, go to heartledliving.com, heartledliving.com. And click on the newsletter, sign up, and you'll get a free download, Love Deeply Now Meditation. It's 45-minute meditation. It's quite scrumptious. And then I just send out a newsletter once a week about the radio show. And in that newsletter, you will get notice about 
the free masterclass that's coming up at the beginning of April. Just bringing in all of the final pieces of it. I've been working one-on-one -on -one with, with some of my team and some members to, to really make sure I've got the steps. Like they're, the steps are a little bit different for each person I found that I'm working, but I want to create a step-by-step -step process that you can follow that will be kind of the stepping stones for most people. Now you'll need to be a little bit flexible and adaptable in that, but I want to empower you to be able to use the ego game of opposites yourself at home to unwind and change your whole definition of terms that dictionary definition, dictionary definitions of terms that the ego has embedded way back into your mind, like a virus. And this virus is creating a perfect recipe for self-sabotage. So if you haven't listened to this episode yet, I, I shared it when it was fresh. I just discovered it and I was still processing it in my head when I was trying to share it with you on the live radio show. So as I listened back the one time, I'm like, wow, I'm really in process there. I could tell I was still working through it myself, but I really wanted to share it with you because I know if you had a computer with a virus in it, you would want to know right away. So basically your mind is like a computer and there's a virus playing in the background in the subconscious mind and the ego has embedded it there. And what I've discovered is there's different dictionaries. So we have the world's dictionary in, in the world. If you looked up Google and you, you typed in happiness, def definition of happiness, you would get a definition, the world's definition. And yeah, different diction dictionaries have a slight version, but you know what happiness means in the world. We, we know that, right? Or so we think. We never think to look at what is my own definition of happiness within my subconscious mind. What do I actually believe about happiness? And this ego definition of the dictionary in the, the mind is created based on fear. And the ego creates this crazy definition of happiness, uses some other word and creates a crazy definition of that word to play both ends against the middle. So the ego is playing these opposites against each other. And I've explained it before on worthy when I was talking about worthiness and unworthiness, but today I'm going to share my process when I did the ego game of opposites on happiness and unhappiness with me. And then, and then what we do is we shine light on those ego dictionary terms. What's programmed deep in the recesses of our mind that we don't even know is there. We don't think to actually to look at what do I believe about happiness? I think I know what I believe about happiness. It's what's in the world. It's what other people believe. Of course, not at all. Completely different. So let me share what the ego's dictionary of terms in my subconscious mind had to say about happiness. So this is what came out as I did the process. I walked myself through the process. So when I wrote down happiness, the first word that came in, and, and when you're doing this, and I'm going to explain this in the masterclass, it's important not to censor, not to think about what it should be or shouldn't be, and just allow the words to come out, even if they don't make any sense. Sometimes there'll be just random words that come in that, that your mind would want to filter it as like, that doesn't make sense, that, that doesn't have anything to do with happiness, but write it down anyways. So this is what I did when I went through happiness. The first word that came out was bragging. And then I've, and then the words came through reserved for the few, far reaching, out of reach, makes others feel bad. So happiness makes others feel bad, apparently in my subconscious mind. Happiness is like rubbing it in someone's face. No one is truly happy. Everyone just pretends. Then the words I got were imposter syndrome. Everyone fakes it till they, and they, oh, everyone fakes it and they never make it. That was the surprise. I didn't think it would come out that way. Happiness is an illusion, unattainable, always chasing, seeking, fleeting. You should be ashamed of yourself. There's so much to be happy about. There's so much to be unhappy about. You see how it's like even, even conflicting within the definition of happiness, there's opposite that already playing out. Not sustainable, 
the world is not a happy place, doesn't belong here, happiness doesn't belong here. You know their pain, they are not happy. So for me as, a, as an intuitive healer, as an empath growing up, I was very much in tune with people's energy and emotions behind what they were saying. So if someone was outwardly pretending to be happy, I could feel their pain behind it. I could feel their true emotions and true state of being behind the, what they were pretending to be. So that was part of my gift, which I actually thought was a curse growing up because it's very confusing because people were one way on the outside, but I was feeling their energy and their emotions another way on the inside. And then the last word that came in was depressing. So happiness is depressing, apparently, in my subconscious mind, or it was before I did this reprogramming. So this is part of the process. You're scanning the mind around it, and then we're creating a quarantine. So part of doing this exercise, writing it out and putting it in on paper and bringing it into the light of awareness is part of the quarantine process. So then I looked at, okay, then I asked my... And there's, I asked spirit, I asked the divine, what is the opposite word that the ego is playing against happiness? Sometimes it's happy and unhappy that, that sometimes it's very clear, but be open because it could be a different word. So the other word I got was it came unhappy first and then neutral and blah. And then the word serious came up at the top. So I put all those words down and I asked for the ego's dictionary definition of unhappy. And this is what I got. This is where you belong. This is where you fit in. Everyone feels this way. All others are pretending. This is the norm. So unhappiness is the norm. If you want to be normal, be unhappy. If you want to be normal, be unhappy. This is safe. You will be accepted here. You'll help others feel better when we're all feeling the same or similar. So you can connect with others. Happiness is too far a stretch. Being unhappy will help you stay humble. Don't, therefore, you don't outshine or stand out, make others feel bad. You can stay small. And life is not, life is not a game. No playing, no fun. This is serious. Life is painful, not happy. So all of these things have led, I've talked about my, one of my ego personas in my book, Sirius Sue. I named that ego persona quite a while ago. And Sirius Sue, well, this is just feeding Sirius Sue, a perfect recipe to keep me in that place of feeling serious all the time. And so when I do have these, the playful moments and these light moments and these ha happy moments, Again, they, they come, but then they kind of disappear. And they're, they're like, that's, that's what I mean by they're fleeting. So this is part of it. This is part of this fleeting. So I had this subconscious programming. I wasn't aware of all of this. I've done so much work around happiness because we we all have these internal set points. And I've talked about this in the Raising Our Capacity to Love episode not that long ago. We all have these internal set points that were, that were created when we were younger. And these internal set points are our comfort zone for different things like happiness, abundance, love, et cetera. You can pretty much choose any word and, and you'll, be, you'll, you'll have an internal set point. So when we go beyond our internal set point, we will, it's not sustainable because it's uncomfortable. It makes us feel a little awkward or it feels unfamiliar. So it doesn't, maybe doesn't feel safe because it's not familiar. So we end up kind of finding our way back into our comfort zone. We, we kind of fall back in our default setting. So growing up for me, happiness, my internal set point for happiness was probably like two or three, I would say. And over the years, what I've done is I've raised it to about five or six. And that's kind of my internal set point. It, it never really rose up higher than that. I was always one of those people that I could play for a while and, and be playful and have fun and be happy. But then I would get kind of get back into this like quiet kind of serious mode and it would kind of come and go. So over the years, I've done a lot of work on happiness. When I played the ego game of opposites, I realized 
that these definitions completely upside down and backwards in my mind, but the ego is using them to play both ends against the middle to keep me not wanting. So painting the picture that happiness was not a good thing. So why would I continue to go for it or, or raise my internal set point any more than I already have? And then it paints this picture of unhappiness as something that's, that's, that's a good thing that I would want. Cause why wouldn't I want to be humble and make sure that I'm helping others feel better. We're all in the same boat. We feel similar and connect to others. Of course I would want all those things. I want, I wanted, I wanted to be normal my whole life. So those kinds of things, it just paints this picture of something that, yeah, that's what I want. So I'm going to, I'm going to stay unhappy. I'm going to stay serious. And I'm going to avoid happiness. Apparently, if I go by this dictionary, the ego dictionary terms is programmed in the back of our mind, hidden, so cleverly hidden that we don't even think to look there, but it's actually influencing all of our thoughts, all of our beliefs, and all of our behaviors. All of our actions get filtered through our subconscious mind. It gets filtered through that set point. So... If you're wanting to be happy and you're chasing something outside of yourself, thinking that when this happens, I'll be happy, or when I meet the love of my life, I'll be happy, or when, then you're going to be chasing it forever and ever. Amen. And even when you do arrive at that point and you achieve those things, happiness will still feel fleeting. It won't be sustainable. Because that's not, those things aren't really making you happy. Happiness is something that arises within us naturally. And it's in all of us. It's in all of us. And we all have the capacity for happiness. We just have the set point that keeps us from allowing the expression of it. So when we can change the set point, and then of course, change the subconscious programming, this viral programming that the ego has created, then we'll be able to shift. So the shift into happiness, the new definition, I, I've asked spirit to give me a new definition. And I, what I'm doing is basically exposing all the ego dictionary definitions, quarantining them, healing and clearing them, and then creating a new program a new dictionary term. So my new belief on every level, including the subconscious mind around happiness and joy is the one that I, that channeled, that spirit channeled through me. So I wrote the words happiness and joy at the top. And I asked spirit, give me a new definition. One that is in alignment with the truth, capital T truth. And this is, these are the words I got. So this is my new definition of terms for happiness naturally arises when you're in alignment. It's a state of being that aligns with our true nature. The gift of presence, light, it's a symbol of love. When we're in that presence of love and spirit, it sparks joy naturally. It is a light that, that will attract others who are ready to heal and remember. You can feel light on your feet, lighthearted, there's a sprinkling of love all around you when you're in that natural state of joy and authentic, authentic joy. Not all of us will receive it fully, but you'll always, you'll get some sprinkles on them and that will have an impact. So a lot that, that just kind of helped me shift that whole idea of like not wanting to leave others behind, not wanting to leave someone else in a state of being unhappy when I'm happy. I, I always felt guilty for that growing up. So I would always kind of come back down to their level and come to where they are and are emotionally. And that's actually not serving anybody. So the way that this is redefined, the way spirit's kind of showing me a different way to look at it and feel into it and, and experience it is that I can, I can give myself permission to be happy and at the same time, give them permission not to be and know that, as I hold my light, as I hold that state of being, it actually does get some impact on them in a way, whether it's obvious or not, whether there's evidence of that on a human level or not, on a, on a deeper level, there is impact. 
So happiness and joy also means smiling on the inside and out. So, you know, I'm sure you've had those moments where you've just naturally felt that happiness and joy within you. And you're just like, you feel like you're just smiling inside. And then the smile just comes to your, to your lips and your face on the outside as well. I often talk about my heart smiling. That's a, that's a beautiful feeling. Sustaining that inner spark. It feels evergreen. It never goes out. Even when you're in your human emotions rise up to express themselves, there's still that inner spark. It remains untouched, unaffected. That spark honors all and makes room for it to grow and expand and express itself authentically. Be the light, that's one of the principles for heart-led living. Hold your light is one of the principles. Be the light, same, same thing for me, it means the same thing. Be a messenger of love, shine your brightest light. Be a beacon calling others home to love. Be happy, be joy, be love, be light. So that is my new dictionary definition of happiness. And as I started to embrace that and embody that and invite that, Curiously, I'm here in Turks and Caicos. I've been here for six weeks. My family arrived as I was moving through this happiness shift. And they were here and I felt really good the first day. I was excited to see them. They were here, I was happy. And then the next day I woke up and I just felt neutral and blah. And I know that that was just kind of life bumping up against my leftovers. It's like, okay, this is bringing more to the surface for healing. So I needed to create some space to allow that. And as long as I didn't judge myself for feeling that way, as long as I didn't, you know, try and pretend to be somewhere, some way other than how I was really feeling, which was quiet. I felt really quiet for the first couple of days that they were here. And we went out, we did things and stuff, but I just felt very quiet. And my husband, every once in a while, he's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm just quiet. So that started to shift after a couple of days because I wasn't judging it. I wasn't resisting it. I was allowing it. I was creating space for the emotions and my family's really good because they know that because I hold space for so many people and in so many ways that when I'm processing my own stuff and or other people's stuff and supporting them, often there's a bit of a process that I, I get a quiet, I get quiet and I withdraw and I pull back and they're really good at holding space for me to do that. And I really love them for that because it's really essential for me. It's an essential part of my process. And all that, all that happened in those couple of days is I got really quiet and they just went on with their, their stuff and we still went out and did things. I was just very quiet and I felt kind of neutral about everything. In the past, I would have judged that. You know, my family's here. I should be happy. I haven't seen them in six weeks. We should be celebrating. We should, you know, it should be a party. There should be laughter. And it, it, it wasn't those things. And the reason it was okay is because I had an underlying peace knowing that everything was okay. And that I was just processing some more of my stuff and everything was fine. Everything was good. They were good. I was good. And they let me have the space to do it. So everything shifted one morning. I felt lighter. I woke up one morning and, and my son was actually going to go scuba diving that day. So we had, I had set a bit of an alarm just to get us all up in time to get him to the boat. And I, I just, I felt kind of giddy and I'm like, oh, here comes the joy. It's just naturally arising. So I'm not faking it. I'm not trying. It's just, it was just there. And I started kind of giggling and my husband's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I have an idea. So I went to my phone and I searched on YouTube, just a random like wake up song. And I found this playful <laughs> nursery rhyme song that was just crazy. And I started playing it and my kids were all in the same area. So he was like, my son got up and he's like, looking at me, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I was laughing so hard. I was crying. And I just had, we just had a really fun morning. And that for me is just giving myself permission to allow authentic joy and happiness to rise up in those moments where it's there. So I'm, I'm learning how to be happy again, basically, is what I've been doing for a long time in my life. And it, I'm raising my set point. I'm raising my set point. And in recognizing the ego game of opposites within my own subconscious mind, how it was playing happiness against me and making unhappiness seem so much more attractive. 
I can see how I got stuck at that level and I couldn't get higher. I couldn't raise the roof anymore. I couldn't raise my set point and it wasn't sustainable. So I start, I just started to raise the roof. Now I just started to raise my set point again. Now I'm still in process with it and that's how it works. So the invitation for you is to go. I've said this in all, almost every single episode. Give yourself permission to feel what you feel when you're feeling it. That's part of being human. Embrace your humanness. Allow the emotions space to be, to be witnessed, to be expressed, to be released. That's how they actually get released when we give them permission to be and create some space and a softening around them to allow them to move. How quickly they move. Sometimes it's quicker. Sometimes it seems like a couple days or longer. And knowing that sometimes you need to reach out for support. Some people, some, some of our wounds and some of our emotions need witnesses. And it's helpful to have other people that can hold space for us to do that, move through those things. But let yourself feel those feelings. And then we can look at redefining happiness. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about happiness. I'm going to take a short break right now. And I want to help you take, take, some, take some of this and integrate it into your life and actually start to, to use these tools and start to make the shifts for happiness around you as well. Even just changing your mind about it is, is a great first step. The first step is awareness. We're going to take a short break. And when we get back, I'm going to talk more about how to stop chasing happiness and how to align with authentic joy. We'll be right back. Heart-Led Living Intuition Academy with Sue DeMay is a unique, unschooling experience designed to unwind, clear, and align your intuitive channel. And the doors are open for you now. Experience unwavering faith and deep trust in your intuition as you strengthen your connection to source, allowing you to walk through every moment with more peace, confidence, clarity, and certainty. Experience this deep personal transformation with Sue's guidance including the option to share what you learn as a certified intuitive coach. This is your time to unwind and reprogram your mind, to rebuild your foundation and realign with your intuitive heart. Enrollment is now open. Apply today at heartledliving.com forward slash intuition academy. Again, that's heartledliving.com forward slash intuition academy. Welcome back. You're listening to Life by Divine, and I am your host, Sue Dumay. Today, we've been talking about how to stop chasing happiness and align with authentic joy. If you're just joining us, I was talking about my ego's dictionary definition of happiness and unhappiness and how the ego is playing both ends against the middle, playing that game of opposites in my subconscious mind, keeping me stuck, chasing something, and it had meanwhile in the background there was this virus kind of slogging in the background slowing down my ability and holding me back from actually really getting that full circle healing around happiness now that i've exposed it now that i have it i'm i'm in progress i'm still in process around it but i definitely feel like i'm making progress it's bigger progress quicker progress than ever before i've been working around raising my internal set point of happiness for quite a few years and this, this feels like it's actually the breakthrough that I was really needing. This, the ego game of opposites is, is life changing, groundbreaking, like mind blowing, kapow making in your mind. Holy shift. I tell you, this work is powerful work. I've worked with at least, I, I don't know, I've been working one on one with some clients now and some of my team walking them through different processes. I had one, one 
client who had emotional eating and just a chronic emotional eating. And no matter what she was doing, she just couldn't break that cycle. And she would kind of overcome it for a little while. And then it would get caught up. She would get caught up in again. And it was like, almost like just, she knew better. Like she knew better. She didn't want to, but it was just such a compulsive, compulsive drive to do the emotional eating that she just couldn't help it. And this is where we really beat ourselves up. So, you know, we, we know in our minds what we should or shouldn't be doing, but then we can't do it. So what's, what's, what's causing that? Why do we do what we do when we know in our mind that it's actually self-sabotage? Because there's a virus playing in the background. There's something that's actually programmed in the mind that's overriding what you desire. It's overriding what you want. And it's something that you just, you can't bypass. Unfortunately, everything that we want in the conscious mind is filtered through the subconscious mind. So if the subconscious mind is not in alignment with what you want or what you desire, or it's playing the opposite, like happiness and unhappiness was in my mind, then you won't be able to override it. You'll be, the, the filter actually creates the action and the behavior. And it feels in some ways kind of out of our control. So I worked with this one client oh, oh, going through emotional eating. We had the, the two words that came in. It was control and then passive. Those two words were playing opposites against each other. And then we redefined it all with boundaries. That was the word that came in with spirit. And that was on a Friday and I, I talked to her like two weeks later, a week and a half later, she had not done any emotional eating since the session. So literally one session within 45 minutes to an hour, we just completely changed and shifted that behavior and changed the programming altogether where she's not emotional eating anymore. That's how powerful learning this ego game of opposites can be. These self-sabotaging patterns and cycles that we just can't get underneath and we just can't clear, it makes total sense to me why it's happening. I, it makes total sense to me now that I see the big picture of it, why so many people are struggling for abundance, that are struggling for success, that are struggling to align with love, that are struggling in their relationships, that are struggling with anything and everything, anything you're chasing chances are you probably have an ego dictionary of terms, a definition in the mind, in the subconscious mind that's playing against what your intentions are and your desires are. So the more we expose this, the more we can align with the true definitions of these things. So even the, the word definition of, of happiness in the dictionary, I'm not going with that dictionary term in the world. What I'm doing is I'm using my heart's definition of happiness and joy. And that's what I read to you earlier, where it naturally arises when you're in alignment. When we're in alignment with our heart, we're in alignment with spirit, we're in alignment with God, with the universe, with our source, joy and happiness naturally rise up within us. It's in that state where we can actually sustain joy it's in that state where we can actually sustain peace. All of the emotions that naturally arise when we're in alignment are sustainable. When we're in our humanness, when we kind of tip and, and kind of go back into our, to our ego and our humanness and, and our ego is animating our personality, then we're very limited in that place. As I talk about in my book, The Evolution of the Ego, it's important to unwind the ego in order to embrace your humanness and embody your divinity. It's about both of those things, being human and being divine. Both are essential. When we can do that, we can allow the divinity to work through us. And happiness and joy is just a natural side effect of that. And it comes and goes. So, but that, that, there's a sustainable foundation of peace. I remember when I was going through, is it really in the depth of my, my personal growth and my 
unwinding and, and re healing my mind and changing my mind. And someone had said to me, what do you really want? Like, what do you want over anything else? Like anything, like what's the one thing that you want? I said, I want to be at peace inside myself. I want to feel that peace because on the outside at that time, I'd look peaceful. I was quiet. There's a lot of things that people could say about me, but I didn't feel that way. I still felt the chaos in my mind. I still experienced the storm of thoughts. I still had the anxiety and the anxiousness. I was living with kind of a chronic feeling of anxiety. I was, I was always feeling the, the stress hormones moving through my body. I, my body was always on guard. I was always cautious and suspicious and paranoid. And it just, it wasn't a fun place to be living inside of me. It was a very painful environment inside. And the more and more I aligned, the more and more I cleared the clutter and removed all of the blocks to love and removed all of those things that are actually interfering with my ability to be that clear channel, to be in alignment with love, the more and more peace I found. And even being here with my family and you know, after, after six weeks of being here by myself, you know, they come in and they're leaving things in certain places. And I like to have things where they belong. Everything has a home in my world because it's like, it's an energetic thing. It's a clutter thing. I like to have things in place, although I'm not as, as like chronic in that as I used to be, I, I've done a lot of letting go. So I do a, a process I, I call forgiveness for giving it over. So anytime I'm triggered or anytime I'm, I'm irked by something, then I, I pause in that moment. I take a breath and I let it go. Is this really, is this worthy, worthy of my anxiety? Is this really worthy of, of, is this, you know, shoe in the middle of the floor really worthy of my, my angst or can I just move the shoe over or say something, you know, lovingly, can you, make sure you put your shoes towards the edge, it, whatever it is. It's in those moments I'm practicing constantly. This is a constant practice for me. So heart led living life by divine healing, awakening is like 24 seven for me. I don't, I don't take a break. I don't go, okay, I'm just going to go to the beach and hang out and, and not think about these things. It's like, it's always, it's part of my life. My life is my classroom. And you can do the same. You can make your life your classroom. And the more you do that, the more empowered you will feel. The more you do that, the more healing and the shifts you will have. Because life is designed to actually bump up against our leftovers. Life is designed to actually come and meet us in our resistance and give us an opportunity to say yes to heal, to say yes to love, to remove the block that's in the way of love. That's what life is for. That's what our kids are for. That's what our relationships are for. It's all of it's for that. So when you start to look at this more as a full-time way of being, creating awareness, being curious about your triggers and using it, you can actually move through things a lot quicker. This is part of what we do in the Intuition Academy as well. It's when I look at the Intuition Academy, it's a curriculum. It's, it's seven to 11 months, depending if you want to be a certified intuitive coach or intuitive healer at the end. So you take seven to 11 months and you really dive deep into the nitty gritty and the, the ego mind. And especially we're going to be incorporating the ego opposites, the game of opposites now with the curriculum. It's, it's mind blowing how quickly we can actually move through big, big shifts. We can create these big shifts in such a short time. When I look back at how long it's taken me, it's been about 20 years, 25 years I've been doing this deep healing work. And, and the last like 15 years, really full time, I basically have condensed all of those experiences into like a year program where we can basically move you in a year. What, what would take 10 to 15 years? It's a powerful program. And the whole experience creates space. 
it creates an opening in your intuitive channel. All of this work does. Everything I do, the radio shows, the books, my blogs, whatever, there's lots of resources out there for you to help you do this. Trust your heart to lead you. Trust your intuition to guide you. If you feel a nudge towards something, follow that. That's your internal GPS aligning you with the perfect recipe for your healing and for your awakening. So if you're guided to listen to this episode, again, download it, keep it, follow that nudge. Even though you've listened the first time, maybe there's something else you'll get the second time. Maybe there's something you'll hear that you didn't hear the first time. Maybe there's a piece that once you hear, heal a piece, then you'll hear something different. You'll get the next piece. There's times where I actually, there, there's certain books I actually have read like three or four times or more. One book I, I keep, I travel with all the time. I keep pulling it out. There's two books actually I travel with. The course, A Course in Miracles. And then the one I'm reading right now is The End of Your World by Adi Ashanti. Those are two books that I, that I pull a lot from right now for my own healing. And then there was times where it was a different book. So sometimes those books will kind of go away and then I'm complete and I, I never pick them up again. And then other times there's books that I actually will pick right back up. I remember, I remember the first time I read Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. It was back before my son was born. So he's almost 15. So that the 15, 16 years ago, probably 16, 17 years ago, I was reading The Power of Now and I was like, I don't get it. Like I get it, but I don't get it. It was just, the, the language was just, it didn't resonate. It didn't land. So I was forcing it. So I put it, I put it away. I put it in a box somewhere. And it was probably about five years later, I picked up the book and I read it. And it was like, it was like scrumptious. Like I couldn't put it down. Every word resonated. It was like a completely different book. And it just landed so deeply within me at that time. It was just divine timing for me to read that book. So trusting your guidance, trusting your internal GPS to lead you to these things, it's essential. That's part of what allows the happiness and joy is just knowing that your actual internal GPS will lead you to everything you need when you need it with beautiful divine timing. We don't need to figure all these things out. We don't need to analyze all these things. And in fact, the more we can actually let the mind take the passenger seat and let your heart, let your spirit drive, the easier your life will become, the more in flow you will be. And it doesn't mean that that life is easy peasy and nothing happens and life doesn't bump up against your leftovers. That's not what it means. But it means you'll be able to process things with more of an underlying foundation of peace. And that's where I'm at. I can take my family coming and I can be in a place where I'm feeling kind of blah and neutral and quiet. I can be okay with that. I can even sometimes share with them what I'm processing and where I'm at and, and just ask for their permission to let me be in that state and just know it's not about them, but it's about me. It just it, It's a different experience of life living this way. And I remember things, I, I often will come across things that I remember were such big triggers for me or things that would just really take me off and derail me, take me off my, my alignment and, or bring me down into a wormhole. I remember times where there's some really big triggers and I don't get those anymore. I love when you have those moments, when I have those moments where I realized I've come full circle healing around something. When you, all of a sudden you're, you're doing something, you're like, oh, normally I would be triggered by this, but there's no trigger in sight. There's no fear. It's just not there. It's gone. It's amazing. It's such a, a brilliant feeling when you realize you come full circle around healing. With happiness, if you can first, one, stop chasing it. Two, figure out what your ego has you want, wants you to believe about happiness. What is your ego programmed in your subconscious mind about happiness and unhappiness? Your willingness to look at those ego definitions. 
join me at the beginning of April for the masterclass. Go to my website, heartledliving.com and sign up for the newsletter so you can stay informed or join me on the Heart Yes Movement group on Facebook. And you can find me on Instagram, Sue May. Come and find me there and, and join me for that masterclass. This is really going to shift a lot of your self-sabotaging habits, patterns, cycles, those things that you just can't quite change and you know you want to and you know you like you desire it and you and you know better but you just can't quite do it and this workshop is going to help you understand why and give you the tools step by step and how to actually quarantine those mind viruses and reprogram them and create a new way of being in relationship with these these beautiful words like happiness and authentic joy and abundance and love, all of these things that we all desire in our life. All of these things can be reprogrammed in our minds. When you stop chasing happiness and you give yourself permission to feel what you feel when you feel it, you can be open to happiness, but don't chase it. You can be willing to allow the natural feelings to arise Be honest and take a look at your internal set point for happiness. Where's your current set point for happiness? Maybe it's a little higher than it used to be, but maybe it's still below seven. And what are some things that you can allow into your life that will allow you to naturally experience joy and happiness? These are some of the questions. These are some of the ways that you can bring what I'm teaching you, bring these ideas into your life and start to shift internally. So I guarantee there is no amount of things on the outside that will really authentically allow you to feel and experience happiness and joy within. It's going to be pretending or it's going to be temporary. It's not sustainable. When we are naturally in alignment with the truth of who we are, authentic joy rises up naturally. We can feel these beautiful experiences of happiness without chasing it. It just comes. It just comes up and into our experience. When we raise our internal set point, and we begin to invite more happiness into our life as opposed to chasing it. It's a big difference between inviting and chasing. There's a big difference between allowing, being open, and wanting or reaching or forcing or trying. Two very different places to come from. One is ego-based on fear, and the other is just naturally alignment with love. That's with spirit as our teacher. So spirit can meet us and teach us and help us unwind and give us the steps we need and give us the tools we need and give us the resources we need and the people that we need to align with that can help us actually align authentically with joy and happiness. So my prayer for you today is to let go of the chase, let go of the seeking, to stop, to breathe, and in this moment, just soften. Soften your heart. Soften and open. Imagine your mind wide open as you allow the divine to guide you in your life to those beautiful experiences and that beautiful alignment that allows you to connect to that sweet spot inside of you where happiness and joy naturally rise up within you. May you open your heart to receive it and allow it and celebrate it when it arrives. And when it leaves or when it shifts, just stay in that place of peace, knowing that it's going to arise again naturally. I love you. I appreciate you. Until next week, 
I see you. I honor you. Namaste. You've been listening to Life by Divine with your host, Sue DeMay. Shift your consciousness from head to heart and enliven your soul as you discover how to lead with your heart and live your own life by divine. Join Sue in the growing global heart-led living community at heartledliving.com. That is heart, L-E-D, living.com.